Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon and now we will be deriving expressions for those derivatives which are last class remember dfx by du by u1 or dfax by d alpha etc which are u derivative alpha derivative q derivatives like that and we understand that these derivatives are evaluated at steady state, it is a very important thing. And second thing we should understand that we are using stability access system, right? And by now you know what is a stability access system. To revise your understanding, we know that if this is the airplane which was having x axis like this, z axis like this, and it was having a steady state angle of attack, let us say alpha. 1, so it is cruising at an alpha 2 degree, so I am saying alpha 1. When I am defining st uh, stability axis system, I am saying I am aligning this x axis along the total velocity in the vertical plane and I am calling it xs and naturally your z will become zs. So, you could see that now I am not working in x and z axis, I am instead working on xs and zs and the consequence of that is w1 becomes 0, right, because there won't be any component along w1 when I am talking about a vertical uh, plane motion restricted to vertical plane and since it is very simple that this is the airplane, this is the velocity vector and if this is the x axis, I align with the x axis, this is stability axis. Now, there cannot be a component perpendicular to axis, xs. So, z component along z s will be 0. So, w 1 is 0. So, we define stability axis at steady state. We confine our or redefine our axis system aligning with the velocity vector in the vertical plane. So, that your w 1 is 0 and we have to evaluate these derivatives keeping those thing in mind. So, if I draw this diagram for more clarity, you see that this is alpha 1, this is the x what I stopped showing here and this is the perturbed u, this is the steady state value u 1 because that is the excess direction and now because of disturbance total velocity direction will change which is given here let us say v star. Okay. Whole total dynamic pressure will be now if you see ideally speaking total dynamic pressure will be half rho u 1 plus u square plus v square plus w square half rho u square right that is u square is resultant of total velocity having perturbed quantity u v and w and since at steady state there were no v 1 component no w 1 component. So, in general form I can write it like this. Okay. Now, I want to find out this derivative let us say I am trying to find out d f a x a x by d u by u 1. Let us see how it can be done. I can write f a x is equal to c x into q bar s. Similarly, I can write f a z equal to c z to q bar s. I can write aerodynamic moment as c m q bar s c bar. Clear? There is no problem. I am just using the definition of f a x, f a z and m a through the definition of c x, c z and c m as we did for c l, c d and c m. Right. Now, we want to find out d f a x by d u by u 1. Let us see how would we handle this. So, let me go like this 
f a x is equal to c x into q bar s. So, d this is very mechanical. So, follow my steps u by u 1 will be equal to d c x d u by u 1 into q bar s plus c x into s d q bar by d u by u 1. No issues, class 11, 12. What next? Let us see what is dq bar by du1. dq bar by du by u1. What is it? Let us check this. You know what is q bar? q bar we have already understood. It is half rho u1 plus u whole square plus v square plus w square half rho total v square. What is the important thing you should remember that this to be evaluated at steady state. So, all these things to be evaluated at steady state. So, dq bar by du by u 1 has to be also evaluated at steady state. So, if I write dq bar by du by u 1, I will write it as u 1 which is constant dq bar by du and I can differentiate this and put a condition that at steady state all the u v w are 0 is not it at steady state u v w all are 0. So, I will take the differentiation with respect to u. So, this will give me u 1 into rho to u 1 plus u at steady state and that will be nothing but rho u 1 square. So, what did I get? I get d q bar by d u by u 1 is nothing but rho u 1 square as simple as that. Okay. So, if I want to write d f a x by d u by u 1, what will be my result? I have to change this term because you have evaluated this by this term first step right. So, I can write d f a x by d u by u 1 is equal to d c x by d u by u 1 into q 1 s. Now, I write 1 because I have to evaluate this at steady state for q r at q 1 s plus c x s into rho u 1 square. Now, the question comes, can I find an expression for d c x by d u by u 1? That is the question. And then also, since I am evaluating at steady state, what is the c x? c x is what? c x is a component which is coming because of drag, lift, etcetera. All the force resolved along the x direction, but once I say evaluate at steady state mean at a condition 1. So, I write the c x has to be at a condition 1. right? So, c x is evaluated at steady state that is the understanding. Right? What is c x 1? Let us see like this. Suppose, this was x and the velocity was in this direction, then C d would have been like this. C x is defined like this in this direction. If the flight was like this, the condition was like this, what would have been the C x 1? C x 1 would be nothing but minus C d or C d 1. Right? Now, let us see in the generic sense of understanding how do I find out what is C x 1 in terms of C l and C d. Please understand we are trying to find out everything on C l and C d because we are using stability access system. Right? That is what I was mentioning in the beginning also. So, let us see what happens. 
you know the Cx for small angle, I can write it as Cd plus Cl into alpha. You can use this Cx, Cl is here, Cd is here, alpha is there. So you can easily find out how do I define uh, Cx and Cd. So this is your alpha, put the geometry, and you can find this. So at steady state, at steady state, the alpha here, which is perturbed alpha, right? Perturbed alpha, that means perturbed alpha at steady state is zero. So it is gives Cx1 is minus Cd1. You get the same answer as we could see from simple understanding. If you see my last course lecture, I have developed this equation assuming this sort of an understanding. But in this course, I'm trying to go a little bit more evolved way so that you understand the basic mathematics or basic algebra or basic techniques. Not even, I don't call it algebra or a mathematics. It's how to manipulate the expression, how to camouflage physical understanding into the expression to make life simpler. Okay. So this is Cx1 is handled. We know this. Now, next question comes, what is dcx by du by u1? Let us see that. We again start with this expression, cx is minus cd plus cl alpha. Please understand, once I have written this, I have assumed that alpha, the perturbed quantity, is very small. That is why you know that there will be a cos alpha term, the sin alpha term, sin alpha because the alpha cos alpha becomes 1. So, we are again using the advantage of small perturbations. So, if Cx is this, what is our aim? Our aim is to find dCx by du by u1. So, now we write dCx by du by u1 is equal to minus dCd by du by u1 plus dCl by du by u1 into alpha. Right? But what is that we cannot afford to forget that this derivative has to be evaluated at steady state. And to be evaluated at steady state means what? As far as this expression is concerned, because I know alpha is perturbed one alpha. But at steady state, what is the value of perturbed alpha? It is 0. At steady state, alpha, which is a perturbed alpha, is 0. So d cx by du by u1 is minus d c d by d u by u 1 and that is also sometimes written as c d u. Okay. We will try to give an understanding of what is this c d u means, but as far as expression is concerned, now I know that d f x by d u 1 I can easily write as d f a x by du by u1, I can write as minus cdu plus 2cd1 into q1s. Is it okay? You should not get surprised where from this two term came. Please see that this is rho u1 square. So, we have taken common with q1. So, this rho u1 square has been written as half into, into rho u1 square into 2 and this is q bar, q1 bar that has been taken here. So, that is how you got this term 2. Okay. This is a simple manipulation you should be able to do. So, we have seen primarily that this derivative can be evaluated if I know what is the value of CD1? What is the value of CD1 means what? What is CD? CD is, you know, for, a, for an aircraft, CD is CD0 plus KCL square. Let us say I am talking about a low subsonic airplane. So, what is CD1? CD1 is the value of CD. CD1 is the value of CD at steady state. What is all steady state being considered here? Is the cruise. So, at cruise, question is what was CD0 value? and what are the value of Cl1 with which it was cruising, right? For example, if it was cruising at a minimum uh, thrust required condition, then you know that 
C D not equal to KCL square and you can easily know C L one is nothing but under root C D naught by K. That is the cruise condition, that is the condition at steady state for our case. And what is CDU then? The question comes, what is CDU? Let us see, what is CDU? CDU, I can write it as DCD by DU by U1 by definition, and I can write this as U1 by A into DCD by DU by A. What is A here? Anybody's guess? U is the velocity of sound at that altitude. And what is u1 by a? It becomes the Mach number at steady state. So it becomes m1 into dcd by dm. So now you see very interesting phenomena. The cdu is immediately giving us some sort of a very, very significant understanding. If you recall, cd versus Mach number for an aircraft something looks like something like this, right? Typically, this is a transonic zone, maybe 1.1, 0.98 or 1.1 or 1.2, depending upon the configuration. Now, you could see if you are in this region here, DCD by or DCD by DM is greater than 0, whereas here, DCD by DM is less than 0. So depending upon what is your flight regime, this dfx by du1 will change depending upon the value of cdu. Sometimes it becomes positive, it is subsonic type, it becomes negative if it is supersonic. So this plays an important role. Okay. You will see why I am stressing this, overall stability, overall Dynamic stability, when you're going to study, we have agreed that we will study the response of u alpha q perturb quantities. To know u alpha q, we need to solve perturb equation of motion. And to solve perturb equation of motion, we need to know the values of fx, fz, and m. And fx, fz, and m depends upon the u derivative. So, depending upon subsonic or subsonic, the responses will change and it may affect the dynamic stability character of the airplane. So, it is extremely important to understand this in a real physical sense. Okay. So, we have understood what is dfx by du by u1. Now, let us go to the next. We are continuing with uh, u derivative or you say u by u1 derivative. We have finished dfx by du by du u1. Now, we want to do something with dfz, fz by du by u1. And the method is similar to what we have done. So, let us write fz as cz q bar s. That is where from we started. And we have to find this derivative. So, df az by du by u1 will be equal to d c z by du by u1 q bar s plus c z s d q bar by du by u1. By now, you should be able to do yourself actually. right? Now, let us see from the earlier diagram, you can write c z is minus c l cos alpha minus C d sin alpha. right? And if I apply small angle approximations, this becomes C d into alpha, because sin alpha equal to alpha and cos alpha is 1 for small angle approximation. After all, we are using small perturbation theory and alpha is a perturbed quantity. Okay? Now, if that is true, then I can write at steady state cz1 by, by the definition of steady state and the notation we are using. So, this will become minus cl1 minus cd into 0, because alpha perturbed is 0 at steady state. So, what finally we get is cz 
1 is minus CL1. This is 1 we have got. Second thing, now we do DCZ by DU by U1, which is this term we are trying to evaluate. Please remember we have to evaluate at steady state. Do not forget one thing. Already we know what is how to handle this term dq by du by u1. So let us see this this is dcz by du by u1 and that I can write as from that expression I use this. So let me write this here for your comfort cz is minus cl minus cd into alpha. So this is z by du by u1 I can write as minus dcl by du by u1 minus dcd by du by u1 into alpha right now you know that this has to be evaluated at steady state so what happens at steady state means alpha goes to zero so what you are getting you are getting dcz by du by u1 which is also known as can be denoted as czu which is nothing but minus clu so simple so you know what is this term nothing minus clu you know what is this cz1 is nothing but cl1 so if i want to calculate or if you want to derive the expression for dfaz by dfaz by du by u1 at steady state i get dz dcz by du by u1 which we have seen minus clu minus clu into q1s right plus for cz we put minus cl1 what is our aim our aim is to find out this expression you know dfaz by du by u1 evaluated at steady state is this cz by du1 evaluated at steady state is minus clu then q1 bar s plus cz cz is minus cl1 s and dq by du1 already we have seen we have derived it as rho u1 square right so if i now take q1 as common so I get this is I write it like this minus Q1s CLU plus 2 CL1 that is what is this expression again you should understand where from this term 2 came because it is here this was CL1 into S rho U1 square what we have done we have written as cl1 into 2 into half rho u1 square s and for this we have put q bar so that 2 is here clear no issues so we have got these two term dfaz by du by u1 we have also got term dfax by du by u1 here what is cl1 cl1 is the CL at steady state. Let us say what is our steady state? It is a cruise. So, what was the cruise CL? That is CL1. What is CLU? Let us understand that. This is DCL by DU by U1. As we did for CD, I can write it as M1 into DCL by dm and if you see the variation of cl versus mach number also something goes like this up to 0.6 it remains almost constant then there's a dip it goes like this you know this typically follows prandtl glorate transformation and here also you could see here in this region beyond this transonic at height up to high sub subsonic this slope is positive dcl by dm is positive and here dcl by dm 
is negative. So again, depending upon which flight regime you are flying, the value of DFAZ by DU1 is also going to change. Right? You could also see that there is an analytical way of handling it using Prandtl Glauder transformation. And if you see CL is defined as CL alpha by under root 1 minus m square into alpha and this is at m equal to 0. An incompressible case, this is a compressibility correction. So, and now if we simply take a derivative dcl by dm, you get an expression as m by 1 minus m square into cl. So analytically also as a first hand approximation, you can easily find the value of dcl by dm, which will be required in finding the value of clu. Okay, but for practical purpose, you need to do it in your own way through different testing. And when I am writing DCL by DM, please understand I am talking about, I am conscious about the fact that depending upon the flight regime, these derivatives are going to be different. That's the sign of the derivatives going to change. Okay, the final derivative in terms of pitching moment in longitudinal case, which is very, very important derivative. And that expression also will be developing today in this module. Other derivatives will develop in the next module. That in that sense, is the final. So it is basically, if I see the pitching moment is written as QS C bar into CM, we want to find out DM by du by u1 and which is nothing but q1s c bar dcm by du by u1 plus cm s c bar dq bar by du by u1. You have become expert now. You know that I need to develop this at steady state. So that's why one I have put here. So I need to put one here as well. And also, this is at steady state. This is at steady state. Okay. As far as dq bar by du by u1 is concerned, we know that. We have two things to understand. What is cm1 and what is dcm by du by u1. If we understand that, then our job is done. Here, I do further simplification in terms of expression. I write Q S C bar C M U plus C M one S C bar into rho U one square and because I know D Q bar by D U one is rho U one square and which I can write again as Q one S C bar C M U plus two C M one into S C bar Q one bar. Same theory, divide and multiply by 2 to incorporate Q1. So I have Q1 SC bar into CMU plus 2 CM1. This is nothing but DM by DU by U1. Since we are not considering any thrust contribution, so CM1 is CM at the, when the aerodynamic moment is 0. Otherwise, for a trim, if thrust is there, then the moment due to thrust plus aerodynamic, the sum should be 0, right. But here, since we are not considering that, so the aerodynamic moment has to be 0. So CM1 I am putting as 0 at steady state, CM1 is 0. So I have got this expression as q1 is c bar cmu. Please understand when I, once I put cm1 equal to 0 because there are no thrust contribution because and if suppose the thrust line was such that it was also giving a pitching pitch down moment. Then to trim the airplane that pitch down moment and another pitch up moment total cm has to be 0. Right? The aerodynamic plus moment due to the thrust. But since we are not considering thrust for trim Total CM has to be 0 means the aerodynamic moment has to be 0. That is the understanding. Okay. And here it is important to know what is CMU. 
and let us understand that dcm by du by u1 is again I can write it as m1 into dcm by dm. Now, focus here. Think of the airplane. As the airplane is accelerating towards high speed or supersonic Mach number, what happens? The aerodynamic center of the wing, aerodynamic center of the tail, they move aft. Okay. So, if you try to see what is the effect of aerodynamic center moving of the tail moving aft, that means the tail moment arm is increasing. So, there will be a pitch down moment. So, dcm by dm will become dcm by dm will become negative in a sense it will give a pitch down moment as I am going to accelerate it is going nose down and that phenomena is to be known as tuck under accelerating and this unless the pilot was aware of this and he puts a appropriate elevator correction. So, from that point of view again you see whether you are at a lower subsonic speed or you are going to a supersonic speed you need to be very careful about this derivative dcm by dm okay, which you can estimate once you know how the aerodynamic center is changing with respect to the Mach number. Okay. So, that is also extremely important uh, derivative, but all are all, all of this you can estimate either approximately through analytical method fairly accurately through internal testing and more reasonably well through flight testing or all together in a collaborative manner in an excellent way all the derivative can be captured within 10 to 15 percent depending upon what regime you are operating. So, today what I try to explain you how do I find these derivatives which are useful for characterizing dynamic stability through solving the equations of motion which are perturbed equation of motion and we try to understand how do I find these derivatives using the geometry of the airplane using the flight regime of the airplane whether it is subsonic or subsonic knowing the characteristic of the airfoil. Once I know this I know how to model the equation of motion to evaluate whether the airplane is dynamically stable or not towards that aim we are inching forward. Thank you very much.